Hello, how may I help you? Uh, can I get a plate with plate? grilled teriyaki chicken? Uh, we're out of teriyaki chicken. Oh, you're out of that? Okay, uh, Kung Pao chicken. What else? You want to try the honey sesame? Is that Kung Pao? Yeah, Kung Pao. Uh, we're about to pick up some Panda Express here for lunch. We decided to get out and get some fresh ice cold air today and uh, some hot Chinese food. So ever since I had COVID, it seems like I've been craving Chinese food. It seems kind of strange. Maybe there's a connection there. <laughs> so uh, we kind of got hit pretty good with some snow the last few days. A little bit of a snowstorm here. Um, some of you guys that live maybe in the northeast or something like that may not be too impressed with our snowstorm here. But um, here in Oklahoma, we don't really have the resources that other places have as far as uh, street plowing equipment and all that. And a lot of people here don't even own snow shovels. so. When it snows like this, people have to scramble around a little bit, but the road's pretty clear today, and uh, we went and got our snow shovels out of storage and cleaned off the driveway and stuff this morning, but I wanted to talk a little bit real quick about just kind of try to help clear up some things if possible. I know there's probably some people out there just as confused as I am about some of the rules and things for entering Philippines. Um, I don't know if you guys can see my face is a little bit red here. <laughs> Cecile gave me a some kind of facial uh, trying out some products on me, I guess, and uh, look, kind of looked like I fell off a motorcycle and my face slid across the road for half a mile. <laughs> but it looks a little better this morning today. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to mention a few things real quick. We've been getting questions about it, and I've seen other videos and stuff where I don't feel like. Uh, some of the people explain some of the things very well so I just wanted to mention to you guys uh, on a letter of recovery if you test positive say like I did a couple of weeks before your trip and you're thinking okay I'll just recover go to my doctor get a letter of recovery and it says that they're accepting those and I'll just give that to the airline um, that only is acceptable if you are a Filipino citizen. So if you're a U.S. citizen like me, uh, the Philippines does not accept a letter of recovery from anyone other than Filipinos. So a letter of recovery will not do you any good. It's not acceptable. Uh, if you are a Filipino, you can use that. You can use a letter of recovery to go ahead and uh, make your trip over to the Philippines, but you do still need to test 48 hours before your departure and if you're positive you can just present your letter of recovery if you're negative then you don't need to mess with it but uh, that's for Filipino citizens only um, the second thing I wanted to mention is the 48 hour test before departure from your country of origin some people seem to be confused about that with uh, taking multiple flights and layovers and all this stuff uh, so I'm going to just use our case as an example because we were going to fly from Oklahoma City to Los Angeles. So the, the Oklahoma City to Los Angeles, they don't care about that. That's not domestic. That's just domestic travel. They don't care. The only thing they care about is when we depart the United States.
So when we have our departure time from Los Angeles was going to be 9.05 p.m. So 48 hours before that is when we have to have our test. So they don't care about how you get to that point of departure. We can fly to Los Angeles, we can drive to Los Angeles or take the train to Los Angeles. It doesn't matter. All they care about is when we depart from the US. So it's 48 hours before you depart your country of origin. Um, and just to let you know, when we did our testing, it took us about 36 hours to get our test results. So uh, 48 hours is kind of pushing it. And uh, I tested twice and both times it took us 36 hours. So hopefully they'll change that, but they haven't yet. The third thing that we get questions about is the uh, self-monitoring. Since they've done away with the quarantine now, uh, you self-monitor upon arrival for seven days. And all they mean by that is you will just monitor yourself for symptoms. If you become sick, if you start running a high fever or having any kind of COVID symptoms and you feel like you may possibly uh, be sick or maybe you went ahead and tested yourself and found out you are positive you're just supposed to monitor yourself for that type of thing and report that to the local government unit they call that an LGU in the area where you are wherever you're staying you just uh, report to your barangay let them know that you're you're ill or something you can still probably just home quarantine but they may want to check on you but they need they need to document that and everything so self-monitor just means that you will just self-monitor yourself for symptoms that's it you're still free to go yeah you're free to go um and then the fourth thing is uh on february 16th anyone traveling to the philippines has to be fully vaccinated so now i don't know is that for foreign nationals only oh Okay. Thing. Yeah. So the fourth thing, uh, on February 16th, if you're traveling to the Philippines, you need to be fully vaccinated. And fully vaccinated means after your second dose of your vaccine, most of the vaccines, there's two doses, uh, it's 14 days from your last shot. Now if you do, I think Johnson & Johnson is one shot. So 14 days from that shot, you're considered fully vaccinated. So if you have a single shot, uh, Johnson & Johnson, or you have a second dose of Pfizer or something like that, you're not fully vaccinated as soon as you receive that dose. It's 14 days after that. And then boosters are not required to be considered fully vaccinated. So fully vaccinated just means you've completed the original uh, dose doses of the vaccine and it's been 14 days since your last one. So boosters are not involved in that at all. And the fifth thing I wanted to mention, um, things change there a lot. I don't really know why, but they're constantly changing the rules, modifying them and coming up with new ones. Um, you know, you would think they could kind of streamline a lot of this and just set it up and leave it, but they change it constantly and they change their minds constantly. Mm -hmm. So always be checking for updates, especially if you're getting close to the time when you're gonna leave. And some of the best things I've found is go directly to the IATF website because you can see whenever you hear that the IATF has a new resolution, go there and read it for yourself. They're pretty easy to read. They're not that long and they're fairly clear, but sometimes some of that gets lost in translation when you're just watching uh, people's videos and stuff. <clears throat> so I like to go to their website and just read it for myself yeah. and see exactly what it says. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not clear, yeah. but at least you know what, what they said. And then um, if you have some questions, you can kind of search out those answers, but that's a good source of information. Also uh, the Department of Health, Philippines Department of Health, and uh, Philippine Airlines also is good about posting yeah. uh, arrival mm -hmm. requirements. Yeah. <clears throat> they and go then, through all that pretty and well. Then, uh, it's better to coordinate with your airlines before you go to Philippines. Yeah. Just to make clear things out before you travel, make plans, you yeah. know. 
what to bring, what to not to bring, you know. Yeah, every airline is going to be a little bit different on some of their yeah. things. Um, and also, uh, check with the airport that you're going to be going to. If you're going to be arriving in Manila, mm -hmm. go look at the NAIA website and see kind of what they say the arrival protocols are and all that. So you kind of know what to expect. Maybe the airport's a little different from one to the other. If you're going to Cebu, maybe check that mm -hmm. airport or Clark or wherever you're yeah. going. Kind of check that out ahead of time so you know what to expect a little bit. And check those things often as your trip approaches. So um, that's kind of five things that I wanted to talk about. Five things that everybody should be thinking about and realize before you travel over to the Philippines. Yeah, like I showed you the... I think uh, a, a travel update. She is uh, mentioning that uh, letter of recovery. Letter of recovery. So she didn't make it clear that's for only for a Filipino citizen only. Yeah. So you you need to check that out first. Yeah. I've, we've seen a couple mm. of videos now where they yeah. didn't really point out that that's mm -hmm. for Filipinos mm -hmm. only. Yeah, that's why I told you. Oh, it's letter of recovery. It's for for all of us, all of citizen because she didn't mention. Well, even me, remember when I first heard that? Yeah. I was relieved because I yeah. thought, okay, I tested positive, but I can just get a letter of recovery. Yeah, yeah. And then I thought, you know what? I better go read that yeah. IATF resolution yeah. for myself. So, and that's when I saw it mm -hmm. said in there, this is for Filipino citizens only. Yeah. So there is some misinformation out there sometimes, and people just, it's confusing. You know, I mean, I've yeah, probably uh, yeah, that's been true confused that it's before confusing. myself. Maybe. All of them also get confused because of the way the Philippines government changed a lot. Yeah, often, they like to they know? like to keep you guessing. Yeah, they like to keep mm -hmm. you on your toes. Mm -hmm. They like yeah. to change you things cannot, for you, no reason. <laughs> you cannot blame them. You know, everyone made a mistake. Everyone made a confusion. But you have better to uh, observe yourself or search yourself. You know, if you yeah. hear somebody tell this. You don't want to believe right away. Yeah. Just uh, uh, double check. It. Double check. <laughs> Do your own research. So we we don't stay on top of that stuff as much yeah. as a lot of the other channels, but uh, we do get a lot of questions. I try to help people get answered mm -hmm. to their questions, and these are just some things that have been coming up a lot that I mm -hmm. wanted to help try to clarify if someone happens to come across our videos. Maybe uh, this information is helpful to them, but. Uh, one of the big things is the letter of recovery. I don't think a lot of people realize that's Filipinos only right now. Now, yeah. things can change. Things do change there quite a bit. So, and then the be insurance, expecting that. Right? Yeah, they travel insurance. They have the insurance. Yeah, travel insurance is now required. Although it's not hard to get it, but it added to your expenses. Yeah, and then also keep in mind right now, there's different rules for vaccinated and unvaccinated. Now, after Feb February 16th, uh, I guess a lot of that will change because you'll have to be vaccinated to enter. So, um, the, yeah. they, the way they have it separated out, it's a little bit confusing now because unvaccinated people still have to do the hotel quarantine and all that. So. And, and even the kids now, <clears throat> they change the quarantine, uh, no, fully vaccinated for the child. Yeah, there's a certain age, I believe it's 12 and up. If your child is not vaccinated, then... yeah. You will have to be treated as an unvaccinated person traveling with that child and you'll have to quarantine yeah so kind of follow that if you're if you're gonna be traveling with children that's a big thing especially for us so uh, that's something to watch so hopefully that's some helpful information to you guys we're gonna go ahead and hit this drive through here panda express, uh, panda express. and uh, have some lunch so thanks for watching everybody take care and we'll see you on the next video